uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! G'day humans, I'm Bushkin. Today's video is about game improvement. Uh, a little bit of coaching. It's not to say that I'm the best in PUBG Mobile. It's not even uh, to say that I'm better than you at PUBG Mobile. It's just about things that I've worked on and little tips and tricks that I use and also about the state of mind it takes to play PUBG Mobile well. Um, I have noticed that overall the most important thing you can do in PUBG Mobile is control your focus and be involved and engaged. Um, most of the time when I'm going rubbish, it's because it's just apathetic gameplay. Um, and I find that you have to physically and mentally prepare yourself for this. Um, either give yourself an aim within a game, like I want to make sure that I stay close to hard cover, or I'm going to make sure that I push my knocks fast, or I'm going to make sure that I run a double automatic weapon so that I am able to engage multiple targets at once, or I'm going to focus on my parkour and vaulting. These are the things, as long as you have a little goal within your game and you keep reminding yourself, you'll get better at it. Anyway, let's get on with some of these tips and tricks and rumble and stumble. Anytime you're in a situation where you're basically aggressively engaging an enemy that's inside a house or a structure, uh, you want to be able to think a step ahead and think of where they would be going to camp, to hold. Uh, a lot of people are very mobile in this, and that's your best, best feature. Like, you've got to be moving around all the time. But if you're used to the way people work, particularly on the Asia server where I live, um, you know that they're going to hold in spaces behind walls and corners, like that guy there. And you get the knock and you push. So that's using your imagination with grenades. That's what I mean when I talk about this. And then it's just a, an easy clear for the second. Something I do all the time with grenades is you're going to note that there's someone holding an angle and I'm going to get nailed as I try and rotate through Science Center. Uh, I will use grenades as like a landmine and try and push people into that landmine. Um, it's especially good against really aggressive players who are charging up and think they've got an advantage. And I mean, I've already healed. So you're going to see, I'm going to put the grenade over there and I'm going to constantly push the right hand side and try and get him to come to the left where he takes all that damage, gets slightly edged and then falls over. This isn't a one-off occurrence. I do it all the time. Interesting part here. Okay, so if we have a look at the crate, you'll see that there is obviously a vest on the ground. It's been looted. Okay, so that seems pretty clear to me that there's someone here already and there's an organ there. So the first thing I do is look at the window here because people are sweaty, okay? And the idea here and it's, uh, I'll also show you one other thing on the entry here. Um, as I came into this crate, look at where I parked the car. This is not an accident, okay? I parked the car on the right side of the crate. Um, obviously, there are houses here. This is something you should be doing all the time when you come into a crate. Um, if you put the car between you and the most likely spot that someone's going to be holding an angle on you from, then you have a bit of cover. And it means that you kind of sit between those two things. And then I see him, we get the headshot, and then we immediately push because he's obviously got level three gear on. I'm going to pull a grenade out here and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did with the last guy. Um, you've got to be ready. And then the other thing you want to do in this situation is use corners. You always want to be right on the corner. That gives you the best opportunity to move uh, and reset your peak. Um, when I pull the grenade out, I'm on the corner. I do this all the time. I've talked about this before. And then I throw it straight on the ground. And it clears him up. So that's just a couple of tips with grenades. Uh, this is very simple. This is just swapping through the car. Uh, I get screen lock there, which nearly got me killed. But anyway, we're done. Uh, and another one that a lot of people don't do at all, which is really weird for me, is switch to FPP late game, especially when you're attacking someone in smoke. The way it works is if you go back and look, um, when I am looking at this angle, look how big he is on the screen there, right? That's, that's the target. All I'm seeing is the target. I'm seeing the front of my gun. Uh, if you go back here and look at where I am here, um, the target is not right in front of me. In fact, the target is a lot harder to see. And once you get in, in inside the smoke, which I'll show you in the next clip, that becomes even more obvious what I'm talking about here. So this is a third person perspective. And once I switch into the smoke, okay, you'll see 
I am seeing directly in front of me. Um, that guy is still seeing the smoke behind him and it obscures the view. It's even better in urban environments like this. Like, look at the difference as I switch in. That's, I can't see anything. There is the target right there. All right, watch the difference. As soon as I switch into that smoke, watch how much clearer this becomes. Bang. It's like so obvious. And it's a really, really clutch play that most people use. This is just an odd one. Someone said to me while I was playing the other day, I didn't know you could do that. And then I, a lot of people, I'll show you a couple of these, don't know there's the back of Waterworld. Um, there is obviously just outside of Ruins. There is a little island in the middle there and you can just go straight over the top of those two. You can also jump the, uh, if you're going full pelt and straight, you can jump those trenches outside of Gatka. Um, this is another one that someone didn't know. This is the, see this couch here? This is super clutch. I've used this so many times. Um, people love to camp down in the auditorium. If you just crouch up on this couch, you can peek that whole window and you can't do it any other way. They can't shoot up. It's it's so useful. Uh, this is, okay, this is a really good one because I had this chat the other day uh, with Faz and I was trying to describe to him how you defend stairs. Um, a lot of people will sit directly on top of the stair, uh, just there, that's wrong. A lot of people will throw smoke down in there so that people running up um, are obscured and lose their way. And look, I don't really think that's very good either because you're obscuring your vision as well as theirs. And if you're an FPP, that's great, but they can be coming up in FPP and you can be in TPP. What you wanna do is be back here slightly to the right or the left of the stairwell, depending on which structure you're in. And where if they come up the stairs and make that corner just there, their view will not see you, but you will see them and you crouch down. And then you basically get to reset your peak every single time. See, I keep doing that. And it's it's just a much more effective way. And it's especially effective in Chinky. Um, oh, this is a great example of this. This is in fact, something I do a lot. You run up the stairs and then you take this angle here. You'll see this guy, okay, I see him coming. He can't really see me. So when when I peek here, it's from desync. So I am seeing him first. The server is then sending to him that I am coming out. And by the time he gets the message, he's dead, okay. Um, this is a great way for holding stairs. Uh, I'll show you another one. Here, this is um, this is more about assaulting the stairs. Uh, okay, you're gonna see I come up hard on the right wall. You hit that right side, and you try and aim up, because you've got to, a lot of people will make the mistake of aiming at the stair level here um, as they advance. You want to be aiming up, all right, and you want to be hard right side. Um, the reason I say hard right side is because a lot of people will hold that peak on the right hand side there. Okay, so we see where he is. And then we come on up. We're hard right side and we're pre-firing. So we've now reset the peak. So he's not quick enough. And you've got to do this fast because if you don't do it fast, then what happens is they will be coming out. They will be strafing out and firing down the stairs and they will get the desync advantage. You want to be quick and you want to be firing in a straight line so they walk through it. So you're going to see a good example here of that hard right push, very, very quick hard right push, followed by, oh, that's just a butt. And I'm waiting for his mate to come and try and revive him, followed by his mate. So as soon as you see them at the bottom of that stairwell, you've got to jump up and push out very, very quickly. Uh, this is just an AKM thing. I, I don't know why more people don't do this, but you want to be shooting feet and legs more with the AKM than you do uh, want to be shooting chest shots. The AKM is all about limb shots. Uh, full level three gear, you're doing like 25% more damage hitting someone in the leg than you are doing them hitting them in the chest, which is terrifying. So if you see someone running around, lie down and shoot underneath this area here and clear them. Yeah, 
It's just your community service announcement. I see not enough people doing that. Yeah, there we go. Ah, dear me. Where are we off to next? What am I even thinking of here? What's going on here? I'm not sure. Oh, this is great. This is great. Okay. Uh, this is final circle. Now, we're playing duo squads, and there's a squad running around that's been killing everyone. They've got lots of crate weapons. They're doing very well. We're running MG3 uh, SKS. Uh, SL. Uh, oh, my God. I can't remember the name of the something 14 shotgun. I'm having an absolute mental breakdown. Um, now, I see these guys over there. I see them over there. The circle is actually further out along the road. Now, I could drive straight to the circle. There is, however, a minute 16 left on that clock. A minute 16. We don't have to get there anytime, for, anytime soon. So I'm going to let them push in because the last compound in the game is at the center of this circle. And they are going to push into that compound. And we're going to let them push in and start having a big old gunfight. And then we're just going to roll up to the back end of that gunfight and clear everyone and basically win the game. Kill them and I uh, playing smarter, not harder. Um, I mention it just because it's really obvious to me that when I'm playing well, I'm doing the simple stuff all the time. And when I'm not, I'm trying to do fancy shit that doesn't go anywhere and it just kills me. But the joy here is the speed, right? The speed is absolutely everything. As soon as you get the knock, I know that I can't get there in time to stop the revive. What I can get there in time to do is changing the angle. And this is everything because just moving with a purpose as fast as you possibly can sets up the next kill. There's your thirst. And the guy's coming in. And we get the knock and clear on him. And that's all just about pace of play. I have to include this because nothing pisses me off more than mill base railings. Um, see how I couldn't go for the... Uh, there's a reason for this, all right? Um, it's not just render. Uh, if you think about this, if this is your weapon and that's the line of the barrel there and this is the scope on top of it, the scope's actually zeroed. That's the point where the trajectory and the scope meet um in pubg mobile i think uh it's kind of weird i'm not sure actually the distance but what we're doing here is the scope is seeing over the top of the railing but the barrel is looking at the railing so what you need to do is move back from the railing and lean right you'll see set it up at head height there you go um you need to make sure that the railing or the obstacle is above the scope line. Uh, it's just unfortunately one of those things about zero scopes. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. Uh, this is a nice push. I just like this push. The roadway is the dead ground. No one wants to be on the roadway. The last squad bar one who's just loitering off on the other side of the road is on my side of the road. Uh, Chris Cheesel and Steve-O are both gonna push down the far side of the road and engage those guys. And they are going to, of course, take cover behind a wall. But it's only giving them cover from the one angle. And you'll see I get these beautiful shots right down the side as they engage both of my companions. And they're stuck there and we get both the clears and then we end up taking everyone out. We win the game. Great fun time was had by all. It's funny... How much of this stuff is about focus and thought? When you sit down and think about this stuff, it's really, really easy. I'm going to show you another thing that I do all the time. Not this. That's obviously a fake grenade. Um, I don't have a vest or a helmet, so that's a big risk. Um, I would not advise that with anyone. This is about the window work, okay? So I intentionally do this a lot of the time. If you're being played uh, by a squad, and you kill and clear, as I just did one of those squad members, they'll really get angry and they'll quite often chase you. Just set it up where you jump out a window and then just hold and wait. And they'll often just do this, where they jump out the same window thinking he's running away, I gotta chase him. Uh, this is a much better example of it where I'm actually 
just after that bloke where I threw the fake grenade. This is the same game. Uh, and I take big damage there from the AK. Thanks very much, AK limb damage. Uh, it's legitimately broken right now. Uh, and I do the same thing. Jump out the window. I don't think he's going to follow. But as soon as I hear the vault noise, I break the heel. Here he comes. Now, the reason this works so well, too, is that if you're flying through the air from a second story, see how he compresses, the knees compress on the player avatar? That means if you're trying to hit fire, the gun is going all over the place. It goes down first into the ground, and then you overcompensate, and it flies all the way up. Um, but it just, it absolutely works a treat. It's one of the, the better moves. I'm going to finish this with a little bit of circle management. Obviously, this is a solo squad thing. Uh, where I'm using the underpowered AK again to do DMR stuff. Like, what a broken gun. Um, but this, I just want to, I want to talk to you about this circle location, right? Um, there's six people left. Solo squads. If you look up here, I have water behind me, okay? Um, all this here is water. All around that edge is compound. But I am not just looking at water. I am also at the bottom of the terrain down here. So there's ridge lines above me. And that means that I have only one direction to worry about. Um, this guy tries to make a rotation in. Uh, that's the end of that team. And then the circle comes to me and I just don't blow it. Basically, all I got to do here is not blow it. That's all about the setup. This one is such an interesting setup for me. And I want to talk about this. Um, this is during the Scarab event. You can see this was where the Scarabs were. Now the Scarabs you dropped, you got a Scarab, you got an instant recall. Everyone wanted to drop those Scarabs. We dropped here uh, and we all died. Uh, and then I was the only one to survive the revive. And I was solo squads. It's, this is like Ace Dominator or something. And there was a lot of really good squads. But they were all in George Pulp fighting it out. They were there the whole game. I then dropped in over here and transferred all the way around to the very edge of the circle. And I've just let everyone in there slowly, basically deplete the player base. Like everyone's dying over there. I'm looking at the rotation and I'm wondering where I'm gonna go. Now the ideal place here is the top of this hill. This is a little bit of local knowledge. And I'm actually talking to the members of the team at the moment. You can see me marking things. I'm saying, hey, they're all in here. The factories are still in. And there's going to be a rush to one of these areas, either over there from the factories or into the factories from over there. So I'm going to just hold this back corner and I'm going to make a rotation in. And I'm going to rotate very, very late. Um, this is all what we call the dead side of the zone, okay? Uh, look at me waiting for the blue to come. I'm boosted and I'm waiting for the blue because that lets me watch people get flushed ahead of me and I'm in a car, so it's a very late rotate, but it means I'm not going to be the one who's taking fire first if there's someone there. And I rotate to the very top of this little mountain. Still 11 left, and then I just park the car up and I watch. And it goes to hell in a handbasket down here. Everyone is dying. I've got no weapons. I got a bison with 400 rounds at a 4X. And I'm basically just causing havoc by making these guys fire and move. I don't want to shoot at the guys down there because I don't want them to see me as a threat. Look at it. These guys have been in the kill feed the whole time. No one can rotate over there. They're locked in an absolute death struggle. No one can move. Someone's going to win. Sure, but look at them all holding. Look at them trying to get revives. I'm doing nothing. I'm just pigging. Just having fun, basically. This is this is a train wreck. I've done nothing all game. But play smart. And all i got to do is make one revive. There you go. MGK Devil 90. I don't think that's the guy that actually killed me at the very, very start of the game. And we're down to six players, including me. So that's five others. There's someone down here below me. So that's at least two of us on this side. Maybe three or four. We don't know. But... Still got a car. Still boosted. Just going to drive into the circle. This is just playing smart. Look at the play zone go now. There's one. 
There's two. And there's three. And there's four. Then all I gotta do is clear the last two guys on this side and we get the dinner. And that's just making sure that you're focused and in tune with what's going on in the game and using what's available because the best players in the whole game were over there on that hot drop. They'd won the hot drop and they, they never rotated. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, all of it's worth nothing if you're not focused. Uh, and being focused is the biggest part of being successful in PUBG Mobile. I'm Bushka. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, leave a comment below. If you want to subscribe? Just say yes, Santa, without all the presents. Um, I'm ready to subscribe. Uh, au revoir, Omegas.